this is video 5C from Apologia's Exploring Creation with Chemistry. And we are going to be starting on page 142. So I know there's something that you guys have all been wondering. What are those extra numbers on the beloved periodic table? Well, I have good news for you because today we are going to learn what those numbers are all about. So the first thing we're going to talk about is atomic mass. Atomic mass is how, basically, how much an atom weighs. How cool is that? Atomic mass, how much an atom weighs. And we know there are different types of atoms. The different types of atoms are called by the different elements' names. Okay, so a carbon atom is different from a fluorine atom, and therefore they have different masses. And guess what one of those numbers is on the beloved periodic table? That is right, it is the weight of that type of atom. So the atomic mass, you find it below the chemical symbol, find it below the chemical symbol on the periodic table. Find below the chemical symbol on the P, T. And the units, because we know atoms are teeny, tiny, teeny, tiny, the units we cannot use like grams or something or we're going to end up with a very long number or have it to use scientific notation or something. So we have a different type of unit just for atoms. They're called atomic mass units, or for short, AMUs. The units are atomic mass units, or AMUs, for short. All right, and one, Point zero zero AMU, just to give you an idea of how small this mass actually is, 1.00 AMU is equal to 1.66 times 10 to the negative 24 grams. All right, so we have 23 zeros before we actually get to that 166. That's how small uh, the mass is for an atom, obviously. All right, so let's take a look at an example. Example 5.4 in your book says, what is the mass of a nitrogen atom in grams? Now, before you think, oh, that's impossible. How could we possibly think or come up with the mass of an atom? We can, thanks to the beloved periodic table. So what's the mass of a nitrogen atom in grams? We look on the periodic table for nitrogen, which we know is abbreviated, or the chemical symbol is N. So here it is on the periodic table. The number be below that chemical symbol is 14.0, which means that one nitrogen atom weighs 14.0 AMUs. Nitrogen equals 14.0 AMUs. Okay, now I usually like to put in the question here what exactly we're looking for. I forgot to do that. So we are looking for how many grams is a nitrogen atom. Okay, so this tells us how much a nitrogen atom weighs in AMUs, but we want to know in grams, all right? So now we have to use the factor label method, 14.0 AMUs times, okay, AMUs is going to be on the bottom, and we do know a ratio between AMUs and grams. I just gave it to you right here in your notes. So AMUs goes on the bottom so that it will cancel out. We want to end up in grams, so grams goes on the top. And then we just plug in the numbers in the correct spot. So 1.00 goes on the bottom with the AMUs, and then 
times 10 to the negative 24th goes on the top. All right, the AMUs cancel out. You plug this into your calculator. It's very important that you have by now figured out how to use the scientific notation uh, buttons on your calculator or your phone. So you plug this into your calculator and you would end up with 2.32. You see how we want one, two, three significant figures? One, two, three, one, two, three. We have three significant figures in each of our numbers here in our problem, so we need to end up with three. We go with the lowest number. Here, they're all three. Okay, 2.32 times 10 to the negative 23rd grams is how much a nitrogen atom actually weighs. I don't know about you, but I feel like my mind just got blown that we can actually figure that out. Thank you to the beloved periodic table. Um, okay, another thing to add in your notes, this was atomic mass. The other number on the periodic table, we're gonna talk more about it a little bit later, but for now, you can know that it is called the atomic number. My purple marker is fading. We're gonna to have to switch to a new color soon. The atomic number, this one you find above the chemical symbol. It is a whole number. As you will see, like for nitrogen, it is uh, seven. Um, and it tells us, for now, just know that it tells us where to find that element on the periodic table. Okay, we're gonna talk more about it later. Basically, that number tells you how many protons there are in the nucleus of that atom. But we'll, we're gonna get into the, um, the actual makeup of atoms in a later module, so you have that to look forward to. So the atomic number tells you, um, it's just, they're all in order on the periodic table. The atomic mass is the number with like to the 10th, um, I think, precision. And that tells you how much the atom weighs. Next, we're gonna learn about molecular mass. Molecular mass. So because I know that you guys are highly intelligent, I bet you already know what the molecular mass is, since we just talked about what atomic mass is. You can probably put it together. So molecular mass is how much a, you got it, how much a molecule weighs. Molecular mass, how much a molecule weighs. All right, and pretty simple. You find it just by adding up the individual masses of the atoms that make up that molecule. Find it by adding the masses of each atom present. And you're going to find those masses for the atoms on the periodic table. Okay, so for example, in your books, example 5.5 asks you to find the molecular mass of CHCl3 in AMUs. It's important to know what units we have to end up in. Okay, so what is the molecular mass of capital C, capital H, capital CL3. And we're going to find it in AMUs. All right, so in order to find the, the mass of this whole molecule, we just have to add up the individual masses of the atoms present. So we have a carbon. How many carbons are present? That's right. No little subscript after the C means that there's one carbon present because chemists can't be bothered with writing the little one. So we've got one carbon. If we look on our periodic table, look at carbon. Carbon has a 
uh, atomic number of six. So you can quickly find it there. Uh, and then under the chemical symbol C, we see 12.0, which means that one carbon atom weighs 12.0 AMUs. All right, so that takes care of carbon. Next up is hydrogen. How many hydrogens are present? You got it, one. Hydrogen. Hydrogen is the first element listed because it has an atomic number of one. And the atomic mass of hydrogen is 1.01 AMUs. 1.01 AMUs. Okay? And then Cl chlorine. How many chlorines are present? That is correct. The subscript tells us that there are three. So whatever the mass of chlorine is, which let's just look at it right now. Chlorine, atomic number 17, there she is. Uh, chlorine has an atomic mass of 35.5. 35.5 AMUs. But there are three of them there. So we'd add up three of them or multiply times three because there are three atoms, okay? So uh, 35.5 times three equals, actually we're just gonna add all this up at the same time. So I could plug it into my calculator, 12.0 plus 1.01 plus 35.5 times three, and I'd get an answer of 119 point now, I can only have my answer be as precise as my least precise measurement. So this one only goes to the 10th place. This goes to the 100th place. This only goes to the 10th place. So my answer is going to end in the 10th decimal place. All right? So 119.5 AMUs is how much a CHCl3 molecule weighs. Now, what if your book had asked you to find that in grams? Let's do the conversion, just for fun. Okay, so then we would have 119.5 AMUs, and we would multiply it by that ratio that we learned. AMUs goes on the top, grams goes on the bottom, and the ratio was 1.00 AMUs is equal to 1.66 times 10 to the negative 24th grams. So once we multiplied that out, we would get, actually I don't have that in front of me right now, so I'm gonna borrow my phone to find out the answer and I will be right back. So actually my handy dandy daughter, not my handy dandy phone, did that calculation for me. And the answer comes out to be 1.98 times 10 to the negative 22 grams. Let's take a look at sig figs a minute. When we're multiplying, we have to count up how many sig figs we have. The number with the lowest number of significant figures tells us how many significant figures our answer can have, okay? So here we have one, two, three, four. Here we have one, two, three. And here we have one, two, three. So our answer can only have three significant figures. And that is what I have. One, nine, and eight are the three significant figures. And that is video five, C.